let's talk about domain and range given graphs of functions and relations. But first, let's evaluate some function values. We see in this first graph, we're asked to find f of negative 5. So what does that mean? The input is negative 5. I go along the x-axis till I find negative 5, and then I go up and find the point where the graph exists. So we see that the output when x is negative 5 would be positive 2. You go ahead and find f of negative 4, f of 3, and f of 6. Come back and check your answers. Okay, hopefully you didn't find this too tricky because when x is negative 4, what do you notice? There's an open circle. That means there is no function value there. So we would often just say d and e, meaning does not exist. There is no output when the input is negative 4. Now look at 3. When x is 3, the same thing happens. Open circle. d and e does not exist. There is no output. But at f of 6, hmm, looks to be approximately 3. Now let's talk domain. Remember, domain is the set of input values. So we want to walk along that x-axis, looking up, looking down. If we can see any part of the graph, that is part, that x value is part of the domain of the function or relation. So let's start taking a walk on the x-axis. I'll start way to the left at negative infinity and walk along. The first time I see part of the graph is right when I get to negative six. I look up, there's part of the graph. All right, I keep walking and it seems to go all the way through negative five, but right after negative five, I look up, I look down, there's no graph. So let's just pause there for a moment. How would I indicate that I have x values inputs from negative six to negative five? Well, it's inclusive. There are values at negative six. There's, there's an output when x is negative six and there's an output when x is negative five. So I'm gonna use brackets. This, of course, is leading us to interval notation. Now let's keep taking our walk. As I walk along, what's the next instance that we see part of the graph? Well, it looks like right there when I get to negative three. But remember, we already found f of negative three, d and e. So that does not exist. So it actually doesn't have an output when x is negative three, but it does right next to that. So in this case, we'll put a parenthesis and then let's keep our walk going. How long can we go and still see part of the graph, in this case, below us? All the way to zero. Boom. And at x equals zero, I see a function value. So once again, I will have a bracket. All right, not done with our walk. Let's keep going. Now here's it interesting. We see that the graph picked back up at positive three, non-inclusive, so parenthesis, and then it just keeps going and going and going, so it doesn't end. So that means we're going all the way out to infinity and beyond, which is never a destination. It's just a very long journey. So we'll put a parenthesis. So if I just look at that x-axis, I've already written the domain in interval notation. Let's do it. We have close bracket negative six to negative five, union parenthesis negative three to zero which is inclusive and then it picks back up at positive three to infinity and beyond now let's talk about range range of course is the output values in a function or a relation the dependent variable or we can think of it as the y coordinates so when we find range graphically we take a walk on the y axis starting way down at negative infinity take a look left Take a look right. If you see part of the graph, that is part of the range. Let's go. Down here, negative infinity, come up, boom. I hit part of the graph right at negative five. And if I keep going, it seems to go all the way along to negative one. So let's go ahead and mark that in interval notation. At negative five, there is an output value. So I'm gonna put a bracket. And then at negative one, open circle, so it doesn't include negative one. It gets really close, but doesn't include negative one. Let's continue our walk from negative one on up. And I look left and right, boom, I get really close to that x-axis and I'm starting to see part of the graph. But the graph that I see is an open circle at three, zero, so it doesn't include zero. So I'm gonna put a parenthesis there, but then keep walking along. 
As I keep walking along, I get to two, and I look to the left, I see part of the graph. I look to the right, I still see part of the graph, so I'm covered both ways. And then notice on the right-hand side as I continue, there's an arrow going. So that means that the range will continue to exist all the way up. So we get back to that idea of positive infinity, parentheses. Let's write the range now. So way down at the bottom of the y-axis, we had a closed bracket at negative 5, and it continued through negative 1, but did not include negative 1. Then it picked back up at 0, did not include 0 though, and continued on to infinity. We have successfully found domain and range for our function shown in the graph. Domain and range written in interval notation is great, but let's look at how to write it using inequalities. So on domain, if I want to write that first section, I'd have to describe it with x's and then less than or greater than. So in this case, it's negative 6 to negative 5 inclusive. So I would just say x is between negative 6 and negative 5, and because it's inclusive, I'll put equals. The next section, we see negative 3 to 0. Not inclusive on negative 3, but inclusive at 0. So x's between negative 3 to 0, inclusive of 0. The last piece, 3 to infinity, well then that's just x greater than 3. We wouldn't say between 3 and infinity. How about you give range a try? Write it using inequalities. Did you remember to use y for your variable? Range is the y coordinate. Check your answer. Wow, so we can write domain and range in interval notation as well as with inequalities. Let's try some more. Here we have a graph that is a triangle. Okay, well let's find our domain first. So that's the x-axis. If I start walking across the x-axis looking up and down, where do I very first see the graph? right here at negative seven. Okay, well, the graph exists right there at negative seven, so I can go ahead and put a little bracket. Let's keep walking across. As I keep walking across, I can still see the graph above and below me right up until I hit what value? Five, right there. Now the graph exists right there. I have a nice solid point. So my domain goes from negative seven to five inclusive on both. Let's do the same for range. Do you want to give it a try? Pause and try. All right, so for that range, I'm gonna climb that y-axis looking left and right. Where do I very first see the graph? Right there at negative five. Okay, and it exists there, so I'm gonna put a bracket. And then as I climb up, the very last place I can see it to the left of me is six. It exists there also, so I'm gonna put a bracket. Negative five inclusive to six inclusive. Can you write those as inequalities? Give it a shot. Check those inequalities. I really think we're getting the hang of this. Go find the domain and range for these next two graphs. Let's check your graphs. For that first one, I got a domain from negative infinity to two inclusive. Now really check, did you get that negative infinity? Because look at the graph. On my x-axis, it's headed towards that negative direction forever, so that's why it's negative infinity to two inclusive. Same deal with the range. I got zero inclusive all the way to infinity because on the y direction, the graph is gonna keep growing. I know it kind of looks like it plateaus out, but it's just growing really slow. Looking at this next graph, I had a straight line, so I almost said that my domain and range was just negative infinity to positive infinity, right? But I have a hole in the graph, so right there at that hole, I need to make sure I exclude those values. So just looking at domain, as I walk across the x-axis, when I hit two, I'm gonna look up and there's a hole in the graph, so I'm not gonna see the graph there, so I have to exclude that two value. So to show that, I went negative infinity to two, not inclusive, and then two to infinity, also not inclusive, being sure I exclude that two value. So if I wanted to show this as an inequality, I would just say all real numbers except x can't equal two. All right, same for the range. If I'm headed up the y-axis, now I'm just gonna exclude that y value where the hole is at, so I'm excluding three. Let's stick together on this last graph. As I look at it, it's just a set of points. Well, those are called discrete graphs. 
okay, so I'm on the x-axis looking up, looking down. I'm only going to see values at those particular points. So to show that, we're just going to make a list of x values for our domain. x equals, okay, I see it at 1, so 1. I see it at 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 are all the places I'm going to see the graph. We could also write this in set notation using the braces on the end. I'm going to do the same thing for my range. So starting at the bottom of the y-axis, listing my y-values where I have points. Wow, so a bunch of different types of graphs, a bunch of different domains and ranges. Let's talk about what types of graphs these are. Function. Do you remember what makes a relation a function? I think so. Remember, that's when each input has exactly one output. And how did we tell graphically? The vertical line test. A graph is said to be discrete if it's a collection of points. So where we had the domain just be a bunch of x values. A graph is said to be continuous if we can draw the entire graph without picking up our pencil. So no breaks in our domain. Now we could have graphs that are neither of these. Let's go back and classify our four graphs. The first one, the triangle. Is that a function? No, it would not pass the vertical line test. So I'm just gonna write, it's not a function. The second one, what do you think? Is it a function? Oh yeah, passes the vertical line test. So is it discrete or continuous or neither? Well, I can draw the whole graph without picking up my pencil. So this is a continuous graph. Okay, that third one, what do you think? Is it a function? Well, yeah, even with that hole in it, it does pass the vertical line test. So discrete or continuous? Well, it's not discrete because it's not a set of points. It's not continuous because I have a hole in it. I can't draw the whole graph in one pencil stroke. So neither? What do you think about this last one? Hey, it's a collection of points, so it's discrete.